uh, in this video we're going to talk about the breathing as part of the trauma. The breathing comes after you've assessed the airway and either used the primary survey method of ABCD8 in the airway you need to determine whether the patient needs a basic airway support, advanced airway support. When you come to the breathing or the B part of the ABCD assessment, the first thing you need to do after exposing the chest, you need to look at the trachea and just have a feel of the trachea, whether the trachea is central or whether it's deviated to the right or left. Then you need to look at the chest, whether the chest is moving bilaterally, whether there are any signs of any paradoxical chest movements. Then have a feel of the chest, feeling for 10 minutes of the chest wall or surgical emphysema. After that, you'll have to auscultate the chest, looking for air entry. And you have to auscultate at the four quadrants anteriorly. After the auscultation, then you have to percuss. If you, if you identify this abnormality on the right side of the chest, whether there's pneumohemothorax that need to put proceed with airway uh, breathing adjuncts. Uh, if patient is decompromised and you don't have the airway kit available then you can do what's called uh, um, needle decompression. In adults the latest guideline says you have to do at the fourth intercostal space slightly anterior to the middle clavicle line. So the way to measure the fourth intercostal space is if you go for the sternocleidomastoid joint and you follow the intercostal spaces, it just lies just below the nipple line. So you have to go anterior to the anterior mid axillary line, just below the nipple line. And once you go in, you feel a huff and you need to get the air out. Uh, this is the landmark for the adults. In the pediatrics, you still have to go in the mid clavicular line. Uh, second intercostal space. Again, you're going to measure from the sternocleidomastoid mastoid joint. Okay. Now, if you if that doesn't help, then you need to proceed with the chest strain. Uh, for chest strain, you have to prepare the whole PPE. You again, I have to identify the marks, which is this. From the second intercostal space, you go down, third, fourth, and fifth. In between the fourth and fifth intercostal space, beneath the mid uh, nipple line, you need to clean the area. Then you need to inject local anesthetic in. And you need to remember you have to go above the rib margin, don't go below the rib margin because you've got the neurovascular junctions. Once you've identified the area, then you have to use the scalpel. Uh, to make incision approximately one to two centimeters. After making the incision, you then you have to do a blind dissection, dissect, dissecting the space. And once you have to go in and rub, go into the pleura, okay? And then you have to expand, open the lung pleura. Then you have to insert the finger and get rid of the adhesions. Okay. Once you've made the path, you need to put the valve or the holder. You need to guide the chest tube, either size 22, 28 in females, or size 32 in males. You need to guide the chest tube. So you have to guide it anteriorly and posteriorly. After that you have to clamp it and you need to close it with sutures or you can put a tagaderm in and then connect it to the underwater seal. And you will either hear and see blood coming out of the tube or air coming out. Once you've done the intervention and you've secured it with sutures or the uh, dressing, they need to go back and reassess the chest. Look at the trachea again. Uh, look at the chest expansion. And listen to the air. Air entry on both sides. You need to make sure the underwater seal, the um, water, is, the drain is bubbling and swinging. And the air 
is fogging in the tube. And then after this intervention, you have to do a chest x-ray.